The entrance of God's word gives light and it brings understanding to the simple. Even as you're about listening to this message by the man of God, we hope that the light of God's word will be shed abroad in your heart. You will know what to do and you will know how to live. And so if you're new to this channel, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this message. Also go to the comment section and comment whatever you have learned. Share this message abroad because we won't always be a blessing to the world. Thank you. That then brother Paul himself now asks a rhetoric question in verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? It's a rhetorical question. What is a rhetorical question? Let's look at a few of them and how they are always used. Rhetorical questions. Romans 8, 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Then he now answers himself. Every time Brother Paul uses a rhetorical question, he asks the question and answers it himself in the same context. Look at it. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Then he now answers. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not also with him freely give us all things? That means after the question, you will see the answer. Look at another one. Romans 11 verse 1 rhetorical question i say then had god cast away his people god forbid for i am also an israelite of the seed of abraham of the tribe of benjamin god had not cast away his people he answers it rhetorical question so that is brother paul's pattern of communication so he's asking a question that has an answer so back to romans chapter 6 verse 1 again what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer daring? He asked the question and he answered. He said it's impossible. It's impossible. You cannot receive the grace of God and continue in your state of sin. The receiving of the grace of God changes you into a brand new man. God forbid. He is not talking about conduct here at all. He already told you we are sin abound. Grace must. So he's not dealing with conduct. He's dealing with your state. Your state. What he means is, shall we continue in sin? That grace me about what he's saying is, are you saying that what Jesus did did not change us at all? Are you saying that what Jesus did did not change us at all? To continue in sin means that you were not regenerated. But if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. That's why Brother Paul said, God forbid. Let's look at the word continue. It is the word meno, M-E-N-O, meno in the Greek. That is, shall we remain in sin? Shall we abide in sin despite what God has done in Christ? Shall we remain in sin? Shall we abide in sin despite what God has done in Christ? Did anything happen to us? So Paul applies a word meno. But actually, the word Brother Paul uses there is epi menor. E P I menor. You don't use epi menor for conduct. Epi menor means we were in sin when Jesus came and died. Then he now says, Are we going to persist in sin after Jesus has died? He says, No. No, God forbid, impossible. In Christ, we are no longer in sin. So we do not continue in sin. That's why the next statement. Let's see where he used the same word. Romans 11.22.
let's do some exegesis on that behold therefore the goodness and severity of god on them which fell severity but toward the goodness if thou continue in his goodness so continuing in his goodness is it conduct is it conduct no it's not conduct to continue in his goodness is not conduct because you are not the one doing the goodness the goodness is his goodness which is at work in you so it's not conduct so when he says shall we continue in sin he's not dealing with conduct he's dealing with our state our state look at verse 23 of that scripture and they also if they abide not still in unbelief shall be grafted in shall be grafted in so it's not dealing with conduct he's dealing with nature the work of god the nature of the man so the continuing is a position not a series of action shall we continue in sin and yet grace is abounding towards us that is did this grace change us at all what we are saying in romans 5 17 he now explained to them for if by one man's offense that reign by one much more they which receive the abundance of grace when you receive the abundance of grace you are no more in sin you are free from sin you are free from sin so he's basically answering the question again same word in galatians 1 18 you can write down for personal study the same word is used in galatians 1 18 philippians 1 24 colossians 1 23 1 timothy 4 16 so notice the answer to use a pi menor means you were in sin and continued in it he is not talking about conduct he's talking about a position so remember every time you see a rhetorical question in the bible if you look closely there there is an answer so let us see the answer that brother paul gave the answer that brother paul gave romans chapter 6 verse number 2 god forbid how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein dinomai we no longer exist the way we existed before we are dead to sin it's not a conduct it's nature so he answers the question himself then look at verse 3 know ye not that so many of us as we are baptized into jesus christ we are baptized into his death so dying to sin is not a conduct it's identification so who died to sin jesus jesus died to sin how did we die to sin by faith in jesus who died to sin my faith in christ attributed his benefit to my account it's called identification know ye not that his death is ours so when i say i am dead to sin i am claiming my inheritance i am dead to sin i thought somebody would shout that very loud can i hear you again so being dead to sin is the father's work is the father's work how shall we that are dead to sin exist in it any longer listen the word exist means the way it's like saying professor Akman died and professor Akman was buried but on monday after he was buried two weeks ago he appeared in sociology class to give a lecture is it possible professor Appan died and was buried it's over he can never appear in sociology class so it's like saying we died to sin but they saw us alive with sin how is that possible so that's why brother paul said god forbid that word means import god forbid there is not god forbid god forbid uh -uh. god forbid is bible word for impossible you can't die to sin 
and be alive to sin. It cannot happen. You died to sin when Christ entered you. You are now a new man. Salvation is not an upgrade. Salvation is not a renovation. Salvation is not the things I used to do. I do them no more. The places I used to go. I go there no more. The things I used to eat. I eat them no more. There's a great change. Meanwhile, there's a lie there. Because you're still eating the things you used to eat. You're even still going to the places you used to go. Before you got born again, did you go to work? After you're born again, did you go to work? So you're still going to the places you used to go. Great change since I'm born again. Born again is not change. Born again is new life. We are not changed. Uh -uh. Change means I am still the person. It's just that I have made certain adjustments. Uh -uh. The born again man is not a changed person. The born again man is a life that never existed before. He's a brand new man. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? This man is a new species, a new race, a new breed of being that never existed before. It's not an upgrade. It's not an update. It's not a renovation. It's not an updated version. It's a brand new man that does not have history, only has a future. We are his workmanship. We are his handiwork created in Christ Jesus. The born again man is a creation inside Christ. He doesn't have a past. He's a brand new man. So you can't be talking about uh, the things I used to do. That's character modification. And it can be achieved without Christ. You can modify your character without Christ. Get good motivational speakers. Let them psych your mentality. You start making changes. Because you don't need Christ to change the things you used to do. But you need Christ to have new life. Nobody gives new life, only Christ. Even science with all of his advancement cannot produce new life. New life is the work of God. Where are the new men in the building? Shout, I'm a brand new man. We are so grateful for having you here on our platform. Kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here. And also like this message for us. Do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from. Thank you, message community.